special Sunday's radio show right here on KSFS. I am your host, Miss Special. What I want to do right now is jump into the interview that I did with Zumbi this past Friday. So uh, what I'm going to let him do right now is uh, introduce himself. What up, y'all? Zumbi represents Zion I Crew, one half the Burners Click, one third of Zion I Grouch. Big up. And then, so what can we expect from the tour this Saturday at the Fillmore? Yeah, this is going to be dope. We got Shotgun Wedding opening up. Mm-hmm. And then we got Blue from L.A., who's a dope yeah. MC. Yeah. Then we got the homie, the Jacka, who's like, I feel like is a legend in the Bay Area, hip-hop scene. And we got Zion I Grouch. So it's going to be a lot of energy, yeah. uh, a lot of different styles. But I feel like everybody's quality level is like off the charts. Everybody's independent, you know what I'm saying? Or, yeah, so far everybody's pretty much indie. Yeah. So I think it's going to be like just a good night for hip hop, mm-hmm. just California hip hop music. And then what made you choose them? I feel like you have the LA scene, you kind of have the Bay scene, you guys kind of represent the Bay. So, like, what made you choose them? Well, we're going on the road with Blue and Shotgun Wedding. Shotgun Wedding, they're also managed by our management. Okay. But also, they're all over the record, especially Adam Dice. He's all over our last record, of Time O'Clock, but he's also all over his new Zion I Grouch album. And they're going to be on stage with us. Oh. So that made perfect sense. And then Blue was just kind of a, a different look for the tour because he's a little bit younger than us, but he's still kind of in the same mode of, I'd say, like con- uh, conscious lyricism. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he, I think he draws from a little different. And then the Jacka, who's just a homie, He's just a real good dude. We've been on the road with him, and he brings like a whole different audience. Definitely. So when we do shows like the Fillmore, we try to do something that is like it. it it's kind of like some chemistry. Like mm-hmm. there's different elements pulling together mm-hmm. to make a bigger thing. You know? It's like a hip hop collective type thing. Yeah, like yeah. every single type of hip hop coming together. So that's yeah. dope. What's up? Good stuff. So then the album. What's kind of the sound that's going to be behind the album? It's going to be the typical Dionite Grouch stuff? You guys went a different way? Or what can we really expect? I don't really know what the typical Dionite Grouch sound would be. <laughs> I'm serious. I really don't know. Yeah. It, I mean, I know that on this record, the beat slap. Like, there's a lot of banging, like 808 beats and stuff. But, you know, we also got a lot of nice melodies and some samples from live music. I think this record is kind of more about the focus of the lyrics and then the music is like they both they both go together but the focus of the lyrics is definitely like to inspire people like our music is always in that direction but I feel like this album is like we really Grouch and I and and we all sat down and really dedicated ourselves Mm -hmm. to trying to give people something in this strange time in the world you know what I'm saying so I feel like that's kind of the sound of the record on this one and a lot of like positivity and you guys are really going towards positivity and I talked to the Grouch a while ago and he's just all about positivity yeah. so for you guys to come together and really like shape the album around the positivity thing it's pretty dope I think so man I just feel like you know conscious hip hop gets a bad rap it's not trendy it's not the most buzzworthy mm-hmm. thing you know what I'm saying but really this is where our what our culture comes out of you know what I'm saying like from breaking to, to writing DJing MCing like that's all about consciousness, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have a voice and you find something and now you're expressing yourself. That's what it's about. So, it not being popular in the mainstream media or on radio doesn't sway me from doing what I know is representing the true heart of, of what I feel is hip hop culture. So, it's not a problem. The truth is hard to swallow, baby, get a bigger bottle, you ain't going full throttle, this'll make you crawl, though, inside is where we all know what's right and wrong, all draw slow, let the flaws go till they grow into a model, that everybody follows, even though foundation's hollow, like thinking you're a father just because you made a job. Special Sunday's radio show right here on KSFS, I am Miss Special, that was Rocket Man, Zion and I, Grouch, featuring Silky. And I still have more of the interview with Zumbi from Zion I. So let's get back into that. So how'd you guys choose the features? You have like Fashan, Freeway, Eli, Los Rockas, R.O.D., just to name a few. Yeah, I hope people. <laughs> yeah, it's just like from different spectrums of like different things, but I feel like they all come together consciously. So what makes you choose some of those individual people? Most everybody on the record are, are people that we're chill with. We're real cool. <laughs> like it's easy to work with somebody that you respect and they respect you. Okay. And you're fans of one another's music. So mm-hmm. a lot of the people are like that. Fashion. I met Freeway before, but I don't know him like that. That was through a hookup through Jake One, who's our homie. Nice. 
Jacob from Soja. He went on tour with them. He's the homie. Mm-hmm. Eric from Revolution. He's the homie. Mm-hmm. Who else was on the record? Mystic. That's the homie. <laughs> Casual. Homie. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody's mostly like just people we've done shows with, been on the road with, mm-hmm. made music before with. Mm-hmm. So since you do music with people that you're on tour with, is there a chance for a Zion I Blue Shack? I would like to make that happen. I know he's on a major label, mm-hmm. so there might be a little red tape or politics behind it, but who knows? I would, I would like to check that out while on this tour. We will keep our fingers <laughs> yeah, crossed, because yeah. that would be too dope. That would be sick. So, The Burners just released your guys' third video. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you guys choose to even come together, going backwards a little bit, instead of maybe just doing one track or, you know, maybe just a couple tracks? Why to form a whole complete group? Well, we went on tour once again <laughs> with... The R's old group, which is called Chaotix. We went on tour with them in like 2003. Mm-hmm. And I just remember um, we were co-headlining. So sometimes we headline, sometimes they would headline. But I just remember every time the R would drop his beats mm-hmm. in Europe, the crowd would just go crazy. They just start mosh pitting every time they drop their music. And I'd just be like, damn. Mm-hmm. Our stuff was hitting too, but it was hitting in like a more groovy, like a, like a bouncy way. Mm-hmm. Theirs was just like military, yeah. aggressive, bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> And so I just kept in touch with the R all those years. And then we just became friends. And he would send me beats for my mixtapes. And I'd get the beats. But then he would send me like 30 beats at a time. He wasn't like most producers. They send you like one or two beats. Mm-hmm. He sent like whole zip, yeah, zips whole full zip. of beats. And then I pretty much I just started being like, dude, you got all these beats that slap. Let's just make an album. He was mm-hmm. like, yeah, let's just do something. Let's give it out for free. Let's do something, blah, blah, blah. And so we just started working on music. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were supposed to be working on a Zion I album at the time, but we just kind of like were lacking direction in like 2007. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of focused my energy on doing this Burners record. Mm-hmm. Then Zion I came back around, we did that album. And then when the space was there again, I went back to the Burners record. Nice. So over like two years, we just kind of like compiled all this music. Mm-hmm. And then we just had a bunch of it sitting, and we just, let's just put this out, man. There you go. It's just fun, too. It's like yeah. making music is fun with new different people, mm-hmm. new vibrations, and new ideas. So it's just fun. Very, very nice. Yeah. Came through the po po, broke through a show hole. Rolled all slush like the world made a snow cone. Shot called Red Bone, thrown in a cyclone. Spin dry your eye, can't cry, get my right on. Title the champion, unified my. Belts wax melts so the fish gon' fry. Throw them in the battle, but don't forget to season. Keep it real fly, wild style is the reason. And I'll be squeezing every bit of juice. Free that's produced, so they shake the cocoa. And then you do the Science of Breath Radio, right? Yes. So what kind of inspires that? Because a lot of people do radio shows. A lot, you know, you're busy with your music. What makes you come back to do an actual podcast radio show? Man, my my boy over at uh, All Day Play FM, so they, he kind of talked me into it. I was, he was like, dude, you should do a radio show. And I was like, dude, I'm not a DJ. <laughs> I can't spin records. He's like, just play, play off the playlist. Just, yeah. We're getting all these people in the building. Just come through. And so eventually it took me like a year. And eventually, I went down there. And for me, it's a way to show a different part of my personality. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like today in music, the music is almost like a business card. It's not, Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like it's as important as it used to be. A lot, it seems like a lot of the young cats who are having a lot of success are very open online. Like, Mm -hmm. they're you streaming a lot, or they're doing a lot of YouTube videos, Mm -hmm. or they're just doing a lot of mixtape. There's just a lot of interaction with the fans. And for me, this is a one step in that direction for me to interact more with the fans. Mm -hmm. And it also helps me to uh, be a fan of music. Because I've been doing this stuff so long, it's easy sometimes to get jaded with the music industry Mm because it's it's, it's a cutthroat business. But being a DJ now and like trying to work on my DJ skills, (laughs) which I'm I'm a beginner still, you know what I'm saying? But it inspires me. Because I'm listening to records a different way than I ever have before. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to like how things blend, and I'm out searching new music. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I get caught up in just doing my own music, yeah. and then I hear whatever floats by me. Now I'm actively searching out mm-hmm. more stuff like I did back before I was even MCing. Exactly. So it's giving me like my taste buds are a little more refined. I think mm-hmm. since I've been listening and searching out more music. And I feel like your shows usually have like a common theme. So I think. It's cool to actually theme the music and actually, okay, this is, 
this is a track from this artist and that artist, but kind of bring it together in theme like whether it be something super serious or you know something chill like that. Like it's cool that you take it into a theme because some Thank DJs you. don't even do that. They just play random songs yeah. that they like. You know what I mean? Well, well, yeah. I mean, there's kind of a randomness to the music selection, but mm -hmm. I think the thing that unifies it is that it's all pretty much... I'm not going to play any music that's like, bitch, bitch, ho, make yeah. my money, suck my... whatever. I'm just not going to play that because mm -hmm. that's not how I get really get down. Exactly. So I'm going to play music that represents who I am. Mm -hmm. but we're also going to talk about you know, health issues or, you know, there's a water shortage in, in some parts of the world mm -hmm. or the revolt in Libya or mm -hmm. next week I'll probably talk about the Japanese earthquake and all the earthquakes that have been happening yeah. in the past three or four years. It's more about like spreading an, uh, awareness to mm -hmm. the radio show. It's not just music and being cool. Mm -hmm. It's about, think about this, look what's happening. Like we're in this crucial times right now in this yeah. world, you know what I'm saying? So I think everything I do and everything we do collectively we try to respond to what's going on. We mm -hmm. don't try to like hide away and say everything's perfect. Look, I'm making so much money. Exactly. I'm rich. It's or not just, about that. Or be a distraction and just yeah, like, oh, yeah. let's go do crazy things. Like, no, let's nah. focus on what's going on. Just, just be present in the moment mm -hmm. and, and be aware. That's, that's kind of what everything I do is about. So going back to positivity, all the proceeds from the shows are going to different community organizations. Yes. We're here at Arco Sports. What are some of the other organizations across the country? That Man, you honestly, I can't even name them. Because <laughs> there's a list. There's like 30-something names. And nice. it's like all these different organizations. Basically, our management helped get a list of uh, nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And there's maybe like two or three in each city. Nice. And then we go and just pick the one that we thought fit our message the best. Mm -hmm. But they're all based around like health art, um, youth education, mm -hmm. and then there's a couple that are like domestic violence based. Because mm -hmm. Grouch, he wanted to do something about women, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's all just giving back the energy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's I don't know, man. I, I just feel like I'm surprised we didn't think about this five, six, seven years ago. Better late than never, yeah, though. Yeah, true, true, true. Because <laughs> some a, people will never do something like this. True. So. But it's such an easy thing. True. And now that we're doing it, I'm like, damn, this is hella easy. We could have been doing this. So it's always, I don't know, that's just being at the center too, like seeing the kids learn mm -hmm. breaking from OGs, it's just cool to give back, man. Like, mm -hmm. you empower yourself by empowering other people. Exactly. And I feel like you guys could set this trend. You know what I mean? Like, you, they see, oh, Zion is giving back to the community with all the proceeds. Other artists can do it now too. Right. So that would be a dope thing to see is it become oh, yeah. a trend. For sure. So then That'd you wouldn't have wasted time. You made it a bigger deal. So. Right. They can see Posted up on a block, kinda iron spot, late night city life. Special Sunday's radio show right here on KSFS. I'm your host, Miss Special. That was Current Affairs, the Grouch, Zion I. They will be. Actually, I'm gonna let him tell you where they will be. Zumbi, tell him where to be. Fillmore, the Healing of the Nation tour, man. Zion I Grouch, the Jacka Blue Shotgun Wedding. Just great hip hop, man, across the board. March 19th at the Fillmore, y'all, for sure. Be there. So, yes, that is this Saturday at the Fillmore. Make sure you are there. It's gonna be crazy. Like, my goodness, I cannot wait. And uh, I'm going to get up on out here pretty soon. So have a special Sunday and stay special. Special Sunday's radio show. With me, your host, Miss Special. Right here on KSFS. Every Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. Bringing you hip-hop, local events, artist interviews, and making you feel special. Right here on ksfs.sfsu.edu. And every episode is podcasted on specialsundays.automatic.com.